Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today marks the launch of the Ryzen 3 Zen 2 CPUs, the 4-core 8-thread Ryzen 3 3100 and the 4-core 8-thread Ryzen 3 3300X. Starting at just $99, are these CPUs worth considering in 2020? Let's find out. This is normally the part of the video where I start a 10 minute speech where I tell you everything you ever wanted to know about whatever's sitting in front of me while you get to stare at me at a nice blank white wall as I put some black words up on the screen. Not this time, I'm gonna do this review a bit differently. We're gonna launch straight into the benchmarks and I'm gonna give you the whole story while they run. Now, while it does mean I won't be able to call out every single number that shows up in the real-time performance numbers using MSI Afterburner on the screen, it should significantly shorten the length of this video and give you guys something more interesting to watch than me as I tell you all the fun details about these CPUs. I will be back after the benchmark charts to give you some final thoughts. Enjoy. Starting off with World of Tanks, I have a comparison on the Ryzen 3 3100 here using two different GPUs. Not to worry, don't run off. I do have benchmarks with the 3300X and I even have some benchmarks with the Ryzen 5 3600 coming later in the video. But for now, I'm showing you a $300 graphics card on the left and a $1,200 graphics card on the right, which is of course utterly absurd. Nobody should put a 2080 Ti on any of these, but it's here simply to demonstrate what is possible with say a future graphics card should you choose to upgrade three or four years from now while keeping the same CPU. A variety of games will be running on the screen as I go over the various notes and talk about these new CPUs. A card will come up announcing when they change, and I'll show you the benchmarks, the actual charts, later in the video in a single group, so you don't have to skip around through the video trying to find them. In January of 2017, Intel launched the i7-7700K, the last and best of the 4-core 8-thread CPUs before everybody moved on to the Core Wars started by AMD just three months later. Launching at $350, it was a refresh of the i7-6700K, which honestly was a refresh of the i7-4790K, which frankly was a refresh of the i7-4770K. And well, you know where this is going. The i7-920, four cores and eight threads launched in 2008. And frankly, it was a whole bunch of refreshes for nine years. Today, we have the Ryzen 3 3100 for $99. It has the same four cores and eight threads of the i7-7700K. It is unlocked and overclockable. It installs on a $75 motherboard, and it even includes a decent cooler, the Wraith Stealth, something that Intel decided you didn't need for $350. The clock speeds are a bit slower at 3.9 GHz on all the cores versus 4.2 on the Intel CPU. However, effective performance is almost the same stock to stock. The Intel CPU does have a bit more overclocking room in it. However, 5 GHz on the Intel sounds great until you consider the expensive cooling the i7 required to get there. Cutting away from the script, I briefly want to mention the numbers on the screen while we have a chance with World of Tanks. Notice that we're nearly 300 frames per second with an RTX 2080 Ti. Crazy and insane, right? Well, it is. You should have a faster CPU if you can afford that kind of graphics card. But if you want 300 frames per second, it's doable, but it does take an expensive graphics card to get there. I think the 170-ish frames per second using an RTX 2060 is much more reasonable for most people. Today, we've got benchmarks for you on both the Ryzen 3 3100 and, as I mentioned, the premium version, the 3300X. For $20 more, you get 450 megahertz faster clock speeds out of the box, and you get a very cool X in the name. Both CPUs include the Wraith Stealth cooler in the box. However, they are not identical CPUs, as I'll discuss in a minute. 
As you can see from the real-time performance numbers of Borderlands 3, it wants graphics card and lots of it. This is 1080p and an RTX 2060 is just barely keeping up at 60 frames per second. Want a lot faster frame rates? The RTX 2080T on the right will get you covered. But take a look at that. It's currently averaging 114 frames per second at 1080p. Now with a faster CPU, that number would be a little bit higher. But if you look at the utilization, that 2080Ti is basically maxed out. If you want high frame rates, you often have to spend a lot on a graphics card. But it depends on the game, as you saw in World of Tanks. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is the exact opposite. It needs CPU, more CPU, and a ton of CPU. We have a 300R graphics card on the left and a 1200R graphics card on the right, and there is virtually no performance difference between the two. Uh, there's a little to be sure. The 2080 Ti is a little bit faster, but we are currently averaging about 80 frames per second on the 2060 and 87 frames per second on the 2080 Ti. This is a great example of modern games that really want eight core CPUs. It'll run on four, it'll run on six. I'm not saying it won't, but if you give it eight cores and 16 threads, it will run much faster with a powerful graphics card. Now, if you only have an RTX 2060, it doesn't make a huge difference. It does to frame pacing and stuttering, but it doesn't make a huge difference to frame rates because the 2060 is basically maxed out. But if you keep your CPU for a while and you do a midlife upgrade of your graphics card, maybe you go to a 3060 or 4060 in a couple of years, you're going to find yourself severely bottlenecked in AAA games with only four cores and eight threads. Now, that's true on AMD, and it's true on Intel. This is not an AMD problem. The Zen 2 CPU has great performance. It's a core and thread problem, not a AMD or Intel problem. So if you got one of the upcoming i3 10100s, which is an Intel CPU that has four cores and eight threads it's gonna have the exact same problem. Moral of the story, for AAA gaming going forward for the next three to five years, eight cores and 16 threads is where it's at. But if you're playing World of Tanks, frankly, four cores is plenty. Today, we've got benchmarks for you on both the Ryzen 3 3100 and, as I mentioned, the premium version, the 3300X. For $20 more, you get 450 megahertz faster clock speeds out of the box, and you get a very cool X in the name. Both CPUs include the Wraith Stealth Cooler in the box. However, they are not identical CPUs, as I'll discuss in a minute. Metro Exodus is an interesting one. It's kind of in the middle. We are CPU bottlenecked, but we're also graphics card bottlenecked. On the right hand side, we definitely have substantially more performance with the 2080 Ti versus an RTX 2060. On the other hand, the CPU is still holding it back because the 2080 Ti can't run at 100%. So it's a mixture of bottlenecking here. Again, nobody in the world should be putting a $1,200 graphics card on a $99 CPU. It's simply meant to demonstrate where the limits of performance are. What it does mean is that you can go higher than a 2060, but not substantially higher, you'll run into limits. An RTX 3060 might be nice, but a 4060 might be pushing it. I trimmed the benchmark there, and I'm going to start trimming some of these because otherwise the video gets really long if I leave the complete benchmark run in for every game. The Division 2 scales very, very well across cores and threads. I have tested the Division 2 on the Ryzen 9 3950X, 16 core, 32 thread processor. It legit uses 16 cores, not all the time, but in extremely heavy combat situations with a lot of enemies and a lot of stuff on the screen, I have seen it use 16 cores and the frame time graph is butter, butter smooth. In this particular case, it's fine on a 4-core 8-thread chip, and it truly is most of the time. You could play this game all day long on the Ryzen 3 3100. It wouldn't be my first choice. A Ryzen 5 3600 would be better, but it is smoother than Ghost Recon Breakpoint is if you've got 4 cores and 8 threads. Fun fact, if you have a 1080p 144Hz monitor and you want to average 144 frames per second, allow me to draw your attention to the right-hand side of the screen. If you want to play AAA games at 144 frames per second, even at 1080p, you either have to dial the details way down or you may find yourself having to buy premium graphics cards, which might sound odd at 1080p, but there it is. The 2060 is averaging 82 frames per second, which is very, very playable, but it's not 144. 
After testing both and comparing them to the Ryzen 5 3600, my general advice is that under $200, stick with the non-X CPUs at this level. The Ryzen 3 3100 is a solid value for $99, as is the Ryzen 5 3600 for $175, which is its current street price. The Ryzen 3 3300X is nice, but it strikes me as a bit of an odd item. It is a premium budget CPU. That's like buying a luxury budget car. The Ryzen 3 3100 looks like the best deal here at only $99, and to an extent it is if you only look at the cost of the CPU itself. The minute you consider the full build, it stops looking as good. At this level, you're doing a basic build with a B450 or B550 motherboard, 16 gigs of RAM, 500 gig SSD, an inexpensive case, PSU, maybe a $150 graphics card. The floor of that build is around $450 before installing a CPU. At a Ryzen 3 3100, you're at $550. At a Ryzen 5 3600, you're at $625. That is 14% more money for 50% more cores and 200 megahertz more clock speed out of the box. There are honestly very few situations where I'd spend $550 to build a complete Ryzen 3 3100, but I wouldn't spend $625 to build a Ryzen 5 3600 system. We'll come back to that thought in just a second, but now we have a quad benchmark result. On the top half of the screen, we have the same thing you've been looking at. Upper left-hand corner, Ryzen 3 3100 with an RTX 2060. Upper right-hand corner, Ryzen 3 3100 with an RTX 2080 Ti. On the bottom of the screen, RTX 2060 on both, but we have a Ryzen 3 3300X running at 4.35 gigahertz, 450 megahertz faster than the 3100. And on the bottom right, we have a Ryzen 5 3600 running at about 4.05 gigahertz or about 300 megahertz slower than a 3300X or about 200 megahertz faster than a 31. It's the frame time chart I want you to see. Take a look at the running graphs on the screen. I want you to compare the upper left to the bottom right, and I want you to see just how much smoother the Ryzen 5 is versus the Ryzen 3. Now, the frame rates aren't that far apart, but it's not frame rate, it's smoothness. Now we have Far Cry New Dawn. It's that frame time chart. It's the evenness of the pacing of the frames that makes a bigger difference than the raw frame rate. Take a look at the real-time performance number upper left to bottom right. It's not that far apart. I mean, the Ryzen 5 is a little bit faster, but part of that's the clock speed. It's about 200 megahertz faster, but they're very, very similar in terms of performance. But you're gonna get a smoother overall experience on the Ryzen 5. Now, the built-in benchmark of Far Cry New Dawn does not use all the cores and threads like some others do. But we're gonna take a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider here in just a second, and you're gonna see an even bigger difference there. It of course depends upon your game. If you're playing World of Tanks, Overwatch, and League of Legends and CSGO, this is all irrelevant, and frankly, the Ryzen 3 3100 is great. But if you want to play more games or you have background tasks, keep in mind, this is a completely clean test system with a fresh install of Windows with nothing running on it. It is as clean as a whistle, which is not how most people's computers are set up. The one case I can understand is an upgrade where you're only buying the motherboard, the CPU, and the RAM. You already have a case, you already have a power supply, you already have storage, and you already have a graphics card. In that situation, you're looking at about $240 for a Ryzen 3 3100. That is motherboard, a $75 motherboard, $65 of 16 gigs of RAM, and the $100 for the CPU, versus $315 for the Ryzen 5 3600. That is a 31% price increase instead of a 14% increase for the whole build. However, honestly, I'd still buy the Ryzen 5 because you're getting 50% more cores, 50% more threads, faster clock speed for only 31% more money. It's still an amazing value, even if you're only buying motherboard, CPU, and RAM, and you're keeping your case, power supply, storage, and GPU. Building a whole system? That Ryzen 5 is an incredible value for the money, and it's got more future-proofing built into it, even if you don't currently play games that really will use six cores today, because you probably will over the next two or three years once the new consoles launch.
For the final scene of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I'm going to zoom in on just the 3100 and just the 3600. This is why you should buy the Ryzen 5 over the Ryzen 3. Do not look at the frame rates. Do not look at the CPU utilization. Do not look at the video card usage. They're both the same RTX 2060. I want you to watch the frame time graph at the bottom of the MSI Afterburner overlay. I want you to watch on the right hand side how the 3600 is smooth and pretty. I want you to look at the left on the 3100 and see it is not smooth and pretty, it is rough. You may not see much of a difference in terms of the video itself because you're watching a perfect 60 frame per second captured recorded video that's being broadcast to you at a perfect 60 frames per second. But the variance in the frame time graph right now is why four cores and eight threads is no longer sufficient for AAA gaming. Furthermore, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is 18 months old. This is not a new game. And it really wants more than four cores and eight threads to give a smooth experience. The frame rates are, the frame rates are almost the same. Slightly higher clock speed on the 3600, which is helping, but it's the frame smoothness that really makes the difference. For League of Legends, the 3100 is awesome. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it really isn't. Benchmark chart time, and I have a ton of these to show you. First, we're gonna take a look at the RTX 2060 versus the RTX 2080 Ti. Why the 2080 Ti, you ask? I understand it's a ridiculous graphics card for this CPU. However, if you keep your CPUs three to five years, you may do a midlife graphics card upgrade partway through the CPU's life. You may skip the 30 series, but you might get an RTX 4060 three or four years from now. And an RTX 4060 might very well be identical in performance, if not maybe a bit faster, to today's 2080 Ti. And so what these charts are designed to tell you is what is today's value graphics card running at and what is the future graphics card three or four years from now that's at the same $300 price point possibly going to run at. Borderlands 3 is a great example of this, 63 versus 113 frames per second. A 2080 Ti absolutely demolishes the 2060, even on a $99 CPU. Again, ridiculous, nobody please go out and buy one of these for a Ryzen 3 3100, but a hypothetical future RTX 4060 for $300 several years from now might very well generate similar levels of performance for similar price to today's 2060. On the flip side, we have Far Cry New Dawn and the 2080 Ti made no difference whatsoever. Frankly, we were totally and completely CPU bound here. As I discussed during the actual benchmark itself, it's not just the 100% CPU usage, it's the fact that this game just isn't going to run any faster unless you throw both a higher clock speed at it and more cores at it, especially in the actual open world gameplay. You're definitely gonna want more than four cores, but, Here's a good example where a future faster graphics card is just not going to help. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is a middle option. It is faster on the 2080 Ti, but not by much. Considering the price and raw performance disparity, going from 87 frames per second to 107 is kind of sad. This was, of course, in Vulcan, as you saw during the actual footage. It would be a little bit slower in DirectX 11. But that level of performance difference, you really need more CPU to take advantage of faster graphics cards. Metro Exodus is kind of the other direction again. 55 frames per second average on the 2060, 89 frames per second average on the 2080 Ti. The 1% low shows a fairly large disparity, 29 to 50. So more graphics definitely helps in Metro Exodus. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We had a nice look at that here just a minute ago, but for the moment, we're just looking at the two different graphics cards. 87 to 115. It's a nice jump, but it's definitely being held back by that slow CPU. So if you want to upgrade in the future and keep playing AAA games, that's why I keep telling you buy the Ryzen 5. It's great. The Division 2. I have enough time in this game at this point to be able to definitively tell you that a Ryzen 3 3100 would absolutely play this game just fine in the solo experience. The multiplayer experience, oh my lord, you're going to get micro stutter out the wazoo if you go into the dark zones. But the single player game is just fine. If you want to play multiplayer, then I would consider the Ryzen 5 3600 to be the minimum. Still, the graphics card did help. 81 to 132 is a pretty solid jump considering our $99 CPU. 
If you are one of the five people on Earth with one of the new 360 hertz 1080p monitors, congratulations, you should buy an RTX 2080 Ti to play World of Tanks on a Ryzen 3 3100. Except you shouldn't, because if you have that kind of money, you're buying a better CPU than this. At the very least, buy the 3300X to get the higher clock speed. But if you want 300 frames per second, 197 frames per second, 1% low, and a 164.1% low, well, there you go. Just buy tons and tons of graphics card and it'll run really nicely. This is my first ever time benchmarking World War Z. Let me know what you think of this game down in the description below. Would you like to see it in future benchmarks or would you not? 136 to 176, it is a jump, but not much of one. It's being held back by the CPU. Another brand new game I have never benchmarked before, Wolfenstein Youngblood. This did have RTX turned on to be 100% clear, 122 on the 2060. That's incredible for 1080p at ultra detail with RTX turned on. Who says you need a 2080 Ti to play with RTX on? The 2080 Ti did 176, but frankly, it was extremely playable on either one. New charts, Assassin's Creed Odyssey RTX 2060 on all three CPUs, Ryzen 3 3100, Ryzen 3 3300X, and Ryzen 5 3600. The, the 2080 Ti is gone here. We're just looking at the three results with the 2060. 53, 58, and 57. Now, some of you may look at this chart and go, well, obviously six cores is a waste of money and there's a small performance difference with the 3300X, but they're pretty close, all things considered. Two points. Number one, notice the 3300X did substantially better in the 1% and 0.1% lows. Part of that is due to the clock speed. And part of that is due to the fact that the 3300X is on a single CCX, which I'll talk about in just a second. But the 3600 is frankly the better deal all the way around because of the frame times rather than the frame rates. Same story, different game. I'm legally obligated to tell you, by the way, Far Cry New Dawn is the full price DLC to Far Cry 5. Same game, same world, same story, just continuing, but you have to buy a whole new game for it. Putting that issue aside, the frame rates here look really, really good. But in the open world, fighting a bunch of enemies, yeah, get the Ryzen 5. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now I zoomed in and showed you in detail the frame time graph here. And if you skipped ahead to the benchmarks, at least go back and watch the tail end of Shadow of the Tomb Raider because I put all four results on the screen and I zoomed in on the frame time graph so you could really see why the Ryzen 5 3600 is so superior to the Ryzen 3 3100. The 3100 is not a bad chip. An i7 7700K would do the same thing. This is not an AMD fault. This is a four cores, eight threads is no longer enough for AAA gaming fault. It does show up a bit here in the 1% and 0.1% low. You see how far deficient the Ryzen 3s are versus the Ryzen 5s. But even the 3300X with its lower latency due to a single CCX core, again, I'll get to that in a minute, and its higher clock speed, it just doesn't cut the mustard. And frankly, if you've got the money, I wouldn't buy a Ryzen 5 either. I'd buy a Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9. The future is 8 cores and 16 threads thanks to the 3700X custom chip that's in the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Moving along to non-gaming benchmarks, we have the 7-zip file compression decompression test. The Ryzen 5 3600 is 45% faster than the Ryzen 3 3100. Given that it has 50% more cores, that is a very, very smooth performance scale across all the cores and threads. Not quite 50%, but it's pretty close. Remember, this is a clean test bench. There's nothing running in the background. The minute you have anything running in the background, music, videos, downloads, virus scans, etc., you're really going to be grateful to have the extra cores and threads. Thanks to the higher clock speed and the larger on-chip cache, the Ryzen 5 3600 in CPU-Z's multi-core benchmark is 54% faster. Remember, it has 50% more cores, it's actually 54% faster because it does have a little bit of a clock speed advantage and there is more on-chip cache. Notice the single core performance is actually best on the 3300X. That's because it is running at a higher clock speed, 
almost 4 gigahertz versus 4.1 or 4.2 gigahertz on the Ryzen 5 3600. If you want the best of both worlds, spend $25 more and get the Ryzen 5 3600X, which gives you the clock speed of the 3300 for $25 more. Finally, we have Cinebench R20. I'm going to talk about the single core first. The 505 score of the Ryzen 3 3300X is amazing. That is great for a $120 CPU stock out of the box. That's incredible. I haven't talked about overclocking very much. You could certainly overclock the 3100 to run at about the same speeds as the 3300X, change the multiplier on the BIOS and be done with it. The Ryzen 5 3600 is 3% slower stock out of the box versus the 3300X. Again, spend $25 more if you want to get the 3600X or just overclock it and kick it up by about 200 megahertz in the BIOS. 54% faster on the multi-threaded score. 2350 versus 3616 is a 54% jump between the 3100 and the 3600. Can I possibly repeat myself enough and say spend the 75 bucks and get the Ryzen 5 3600 if you were at all able to? I mentioned I would talk about the actual chip differences between the Ryzen 3 3100 and the Ryzen 3 3300X, and I will. This is the press slide deck that AMD provides us, and I'm not going to sit here and go through every one of these because it would add 20 minutes to the video. I will discuss these during the Rogue Tech show with all of you live. We'll answer questions and discuss it in great detail. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd like a dedicated video posted to the channel with me taking my time going through these charts and just voicing them over and giving you my analysis of every single one of them. I'm just putting them up here a few seconds at a time so that if you really want to watch them all and pause it, you can. All of these charts, along with all the performance charts, will be posted over on Patreon for the channel supporters to view at their leisure. I promised an explanation. Here it is. The Ryzen 3 3100 is physically a different chip than the 3300X. It's not just a down clock chip. There is a single CCD on both chips, but on the 3100, there are two CCX complexes with Infinity Fabric tying together two cores and four threads. On the 3300X, one CCX is completely disabled and all four cores and eight threads is on a single CCX, which improves latency. This is a minor thing, all things considered, and for 20% more money, I personally don't think it's worth it. If you're building a machine that has a $99 CPU in it, do you really care? Because if you're going to spend 20 bucks more, why not spend $70 more and get the 3600? But I did want to explain that there was, in fact, a physical difference between these chips. They are not the same. And if you see the 3300X on a deal or it's only $10 more or you don't mind paying the money, then you are actually getting something besides just more clock speed. Thank you all so much for watching all of that. Two gold stars to all of you for watching to this point in the video. I pretty much said everything there is to say about these CPUs, at least at the moment. You saw a bunch of benchmark results. I've tested both of these. I tested the Ryzen 5. I've tested multiple graphics cards. I have not yet tested the GTX 1650, and this is the new GDDR6 version on these I'm going to be doing that here very shortly with a follow-up video to test a $150 video card to see where that fits in. I honestly do think that for most people, the $99 CPU makes the most sense. There is a little bit of a difference between the chips. They're not exactly the same, but at this price point, I think that the $99 chip is where you should be at. If you're not going to buy it, I personally would step up to a Ryzen 5 3600 because the extra cores and threads just makes sense for basically $50, $55 more than the cost of the 3300X. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to the channel with a big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, you know where the comment section is. Links to the video description to Amazon, Newegg, and eBay for everything talked about in this video. And I will see you guys again very soon in a couple of days with the 1650X results. Let me know in the comments below if there's any specific games you want tested and if there's any other video cards you'd like to see tested on the Ryzen 3 series. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.